Okay. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Historic District Commission meeting. It is Tuesday, March 30th, and it is 7.33 p.m. Um, pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such meetings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. So I will do a roll call. Uh, Connie Soul. I am here. Richard Mancini. Here. Jason Bouchard Naraki. Here. And Kristen Oliveira. I am here as well. And all of our attendees, both on the commission and invited guests, are attending virtually by Zoom. I'm and I'm sorry, I do need to mention Carrie Ayash, our clerk, is also here with us. Carrie, I'm so sorry. No worries, no worries at all. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so our first item on the agenda is we have the minutes. Uh, we have from January 28th, 2020, uh, July 21st, 2020, and October 20th from 2020. Uh, I'd, I'd like to motion um, uh, to table these as well to the next meeting in April. Okay, so I have a motion to table these from Connie. Do I have a second? I'll second. second, sure. Okay, I'll do Well, Jason started first, so we'll go oh, with Jason. Okay, go, go for I it, Jason. A motion <laughs> and a second. I will do a roll call. Uh, Connie Soule? Yes. Richard Mancini? Yes. Jason Bouchard Naraki? Yes. Kristen Cantara Oliveira votes yes. So we will table that till uh, the April meeting. That way it gives us time to look over all the minutes. Okay, general business. Um, correspondence uh, we have well actually we have a correspondence but I, I did put that in uh, new business so if we can maybe get a motion to move that to right now we have four uh, 491 high street it was it was a correspondence in new business and I just stuck it under new business but maybe we can um, get a motion to move that up I'll make a motion okay I have a motion to move that by Jason second it Second by Connie. Uh, okay, roll call. Connie Soul. Yes. Rich Mancini. Yes. Jason Bouchard Naraki. Yes. And Kristen Cantara Oliveira. Yes. So motion carries. So we will move that up. So um, we did receive a request from um, Anna Da Costa at 491 High Street, and she is here with us, so she can. Um, Hello. <laughs> Hello. Do you want to just introduce yourself and um, let everyone know who you are, and then you can talk a little bit about what it is that you're doing? Okay. Hi. My name is Anna DeCosta. I live at 491 High Street, Fall River. I'm a resident, and um, we are in the process of replacing the rotted shingles with uh, cedar shingles, five-inch reveal, as well as the trim and sills around the windows that we've had um, duplicated to match the existing trim. Okay. So, Anna, are you, are you doing roof work as well or windows or anything like that or just what you stated? Well, the windows we got, we replaced the windows back in 2014. Um, those were the front windows on top and the, well, where the front door is, which is actually on the side of the house. Uh, we replaced the ones on top as well. Uh, so that was done in 14. And we had our roof replaced two years ago. Well, right now, the only thing that you're doing is just the shingles and the sills around the windows and the trim and so, the trim. Okay. Yeah. So that's all rotted. So we had the trims duplicated 
Uh, and the only other two windows we're replacing is in the back of the house. Small windows, one in the closet and one in the bathroom. And those will have, uh, will be uh, the Anderson windows with the wood on the out uh, inside and the, just like the ones that are there now. We're not having them, um, we, we priced it out and it's just too expensive to restore the existing windows. Does anyone um, have any questions? Go, you know, go right ahead, whoever. Um, what uh, the material that you're um, that you're replacing the shingles with? It's like in like kind with the existing what's there. The cedar. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. And the window trim is wood. Okay. And you had the trim done to match the existing trim that's there, you said? Yes, at a Doris Design on um, Dorothy Street in Fall River. I took a picture. I don't know if you received it, Kristen. Yeah, I did. I sent it. Small, did but you, you, um, did you guys receive yeah, I received um, the yeah. photo. Um, yeah, so if, you, I'm sorry. If, you zoom in, if you zoom in on the wood trim, you can actually see that it's wood and it matches the old, the old trim. It's it's kind of hard sometimes to come forth with a project because if you're working on something, then you have to address something rather quickly that you didn't know was there. Um, Sometimes, like that's what happened with the porch. We were replacing a few boards, then we noticed we had um, carpenter ants that turned into a big project. It's something you have to address right then and there. You can't hold off on these things. So I'm the type I believe in restoration. So I'm not going to put plastic, you know, fences up or columns or any of that. Um, you know, Kristen knows me well. I'm, I'm a, a <laughs> I strongly believe in restoring, but it is a very expensive process to do everything in wood to the point that it was that is that it exists. Like the windows, I think that's the most difficult to replace, you know, with wood on all both sides. And, you know, it's just very pricey when you have 40 windows. So I would, you know, that's probably the only thing that's not going to be wood on the outside is the uh, windows, although they are on the interior. I don't know if that raises an issue with windows. Anna, have you looked into, uh, I mean, yeah, Anna, I see Paula <laughs> written there, so I, I wanted to say that. But um, have you looked into uh, actually restoring them, like repairing them, like rather okay, than- she just said that. Yeah, it's just so expensive. So I had one. Um, it was this, you know, first of all, it's very hard to find someone that does them. I mean, Louis could do them, but he would be spending, you know, just to restore one window. It's very time consuming. And when we bought the home, the seven windows in our master, I mean, the glass was literally hanging by one piece of glaze. Um, and I did, I had, cause I love old windows, you know, there's nothing like the profile on them. Um, but because the house was vacant for probably 20 years, no one was reglazing the windows. And so they really, really, really deteriorated and it was $2,500 per window. And when you have as many windows as we have, it's just not, it's not, I, I just can't afford that $2,500 per window. I, I did Anderson Renewal. I looked at them. That was outrageous. Um, you know, and for me, like I said, for us to restore them ourselves, we would just not ever get to a point of living in the home because we, we actually worked on the home for six months prior to living here. Um, and then just with, you know, trying to do one window at a time and heating costs and things of that nature, I felt that was the best way to get the windows that we needed done. We're not touching the other side of the home. Um, all those windows will stay uh, 
original, that side of the home does not get the sun exposure or the weather elements either. So it's actually, they're intact. I mean, we have to re reglaze them, but they're doable. Um, you know, the bottom, ha the bottom windows on the porch, we didn't replace either. So there's some that we're not replacing that we'll restore, but the other ones in the front of the house were really hanging by a small piece of glaze. If you know of someone that's reasonable, I'd, I'd love to hear it. <laughs> We actually, I, I know I've done, we've done window work and we've had it done local in the city, the reglazing and stuff, and it was not outrageous. So I don't, I don't know who you went to, but maybe somebody was overpricing you. Yeah. Well, it was the one with the, the diamonds. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. So that one was, that was the one they quoted $2,500. It was someone in uh, Connecticut. Uh, but if I, I would be more than happy if you could send me that person's information and I definitely will look into it for all the other windows that we will be keeping and, you know, have, we're going to do the reglazing and all that ourselves. Um, I don't think I have any other questions on, um, you said you, uh, my you answered one of my questions about um, working on the other side, but um, you said that that's not happening at, at, that, at this moment. Um, but this is the side that's facing, if you're coming up high, that's the side that's facing uh, like towards Maple Street. Right, so that's Thanks. the picture I took, that's the side mm -hmm. that's facing Maple. Uh -huh. uh, so the um, high street side, that those windows have been replaced. Those were in the worst condition. Mm -hmm. Then the other side facing my neighbor's home, those will stay intact. Um, and it's just two smaller windows in the back because they're they've shifted quite a bit. Okay. Rick, do you have any uh, any questions? Well. You know, you look if you if we're dealing just with the windows. When you drive by there, those windows jump right out at you. Uh, they're white in nature. They're plastic. They they just don't fit into that environment. Uh, you know, my windows in my own home here are 134 years old, uh, and we've been saving them. There's there's various materials if you do have a a weak spot that you can repair with. So uh, you know, I just. Right. But again, this house was vacant for 20 years. If you continuously, you know, maintain something, you definitely have that opportunity to preserve. But the, the windows probably literally they were falling off the pane. And this was way back. We bought the home in 13. I don't even know if this home was part of that 401c. I don't even know if that was finalized at that time. And it particularly had the house been habitated, I'm sure that the windows would have been maintained. Therefore, we could have just come in, reglazed them. But they were, I mean, the wood was just, it was splinted. It, it was really, really in bad shape. Trust me, I like old windows. I do not like new windows. We tried to get the best windows that we could afford that didn't look as finally as some windows look and they're not white they're clean i mean i wish there were some programs and grants for for the neighborhood if it's been deemed a historical neighborhood and it brings a value to fall river then maybe there should be some grants for the neighborhood themselves to assist in the expense of trying to restore you know, obviously the elements that make the house historical, but there aren't any. You know, not everyone can afford to restore a historical home to its original state. I, we try as best as we can, um, but, you know, it's, it's not feasible at some point. 
And in 13, I do not think that 401c was in place. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. Th those windows look fairly new. Those Which, were put in in 13? 13. The ones on top, the bottom ones are original. It's just on the second floor. That's when we bought the home. So 13, December 13, we put those in in the beginning of 14. So what is the protocol for replacing windows? You have to keep the original windows? No, but, you, but you've got to restore as, or accommodate as, as closely as possible to what the original uh, windows look like. And yes, it would be really nice if the windows could be restored, but right. if that's an impossible feat, then you want to maintain as much originality as possible. Which we did with the grills. They're not in between the window. That is the only profile. I mean, you have old windows, I believe it's a seven eighth profile on the grill. They do not make that in new windows. I tried um, I looked around, it's just, they don't have those same elements. No one is really, replacement windows are just that, it's replacement windows and most people do not even put the money into that. We spent $600 on each window. You might not think that, you know, you might think they look terrible, but I've seen replacement windows a lot worse than the ones we pla replace those with. What, what are you looking for us at this point? For what? What, you're, what are you proposing to us at this point? We're, we're, we've got this, this meeting. And I was told I had to come forth because of the um, re-shingles. We, we were re-shingling some of the rotted shingles. The mm -hmm. shingles and the trim. And the trim. So I, yeah. I was told I have to present. Mm -hmm. I believe it's because you had, when you had pulled your permit, it was just for the porch, right? Right. And then it expanded, but you didn't, um, you didn't pull a permit for the expansion, I guess. Well, the reason I, why it expanded is because, you know, when he went to replace the windows, it was like, okay, the trim around it is rotted. You, you know, there's no, doesn't make any sense to leave the rotted trim. I mean, shingles with the rod trim. So you say when he went to replace the windows? Or no, the, trim. The he's, trim. Replacing, he's replacing all the trim around the windows because all that trim is extremely rotted. It's splinted. It's, I mean, you, it's really bad. So we had the trim made for the windows. And obviously some of those shingles are just too far gone just to, you know, paint. Yeah, that side of the house faces, um, it's a Southern exposure, right. so it's constant sunlight and you know that doesn't number on, on anything really. Um, and um, I'm just going back and forth, sorry, with, um, I, I looked up a, a, at least a photo of the house on um, Street View, at least to see like um, uh, like a past image and also um, through um, uh, the MACRIS database, which is through the Massachusetts um, uh, State Commission on Preservation. Um, so they, yeah, and you can see clearly that like a lot of the windows, even whenever this photo was taken, I'm assuming it was probably about um, 2012, 2013 or so, you can see that there is quite a bit of rot going on with some of the windows that were not yet replaced and um, uh, just on that one side of the house. Um, so um, are you planning on finishing up the shingles to match the rest, or I'm um, sorry, yeah, to uh, paint or stain or do whatever to the, um, uh, to finish it off? Right. But again, the other side where we're keeping the original windows, we're probably, there's not much rotted shingles there, mm -hmm. just maybe a few. So those we probably won't be replacing. Uh, there's a few in the back that need to be replaced way on top. I guess at one time, probably the gutter system was not 
you know, draining the rainwater correctly. Um, so there's some in the back, obviously that side where I uh, referenced in the picture and in the front, as you can see with the old, there's like this to the right of the big window in the front, there's like this big chunk of wood missing. So I'm sure once we get there, you know, that obviously has to be replaced. So it's, we're just replacing, you know, wood that is rotted with new wood. The only thing that we haven't replaced with wood really was those front windows. The glass, real, I mean, every pane was just practically off. There was no replacing the window. I mean, I mean, they, I guess to reglaze it and fix it, but it was winter. I, you know, it was just a nightmare really at that time, those front windows. But moving forward, I, I my question is if, you know, you do come across an issue, how do you address it? You, for example, okay, so we decided to do, we were going to replace some boards. We ended up with, you know, the cop and dance. How are we supposed to approach that? To the board. You go through the city to, um, for the, uh, to pull a permit to continue okay. on with the work. And it, there's a section about, on it um, when you're applying for that that checks off, us off. And then um, Kristen gets notified and we can either have, if it's an emergency, we can throw together an emergency meeting for you so that it's, if it's time sensitive for sure. Okay. okay. Yeah, and right on the, the city website <clears throat> under um, government and then historic district commission, that's where all the forms are that you would fill out. Um, Sometimes they apply, not always, but um, that's like the general idea is there. And it'll give you a lot more information on that page. Like if you go City of Fall River, then you go Government Historic District Commission, and then you click on that. It gives you all the information, the process on how everything is done, like all the, the steps that you would take and, and stuff. That That's like a wealth of information right there. Okay. So, and then the other thing too... Um, we don't have it yet, but um, they we did receive CPC funds for um, a um, a guide to do um, pres like preservation for historic properties to use guidelines to do that. And um, the COVID kind of put, put a halt on that. But there are other cities and towns that have um, guidelines up. Like the town of Newton has a really good one. If you go on their website, they have guidelines that that anybody can go in and use in um, re in restoring old properties. Um, and it tells you like different options of things that you can do for stuff like that. And you know you you can get some good information from there as well. So it would which, be to have we, some resources as well, like you know. I think that would be important for the historical district. Not a, you know, I didn't even know about, I was trying to get the trim duplicated and it was, you know, I, I there was this um, millwork place in Tiverton, waited six weeks, they never got back to us. And it was, you know, by chance that I found the mill worker in Fall River, but it would be nice to have maybe like, a resource guide with a few options of, you know, like Connie uh, mentioned the um, window restorer, that'd be great to have the ability to reach out or have an opportunity, you know, to uh, go if, to you, if you If you have questions and stuff, reach out to the Preservation Society. They okay. have um, resources that our commission here uh, doesn't necessarily have to offer okay. you, but they've been, um, I know that the Preservation Society has resources and that's why I'm saying to you, you probably could have saved a lot of money reglazing the original windows. Oh, I'm sure we spent a fortune on the, I mean, uh, you might you, even trying to, you know, go a certain route with replacement windows, but a nicer replacement window, it's still very expensive. 
Well, that's why yeah. keeping the original, it's been proven over and over again that it's actually cheaper to keep them, that new windows aren't necessarily a vinyl sided, I mean, vinyl windows aren't necessarily uh, a better quality by any means. No, and I so hate them. I'm not going to lie. I really do hate them. But, you know, yeah. when you're trying to replace 20 windows at. Paula, I've been there. Yeah. I, know, I know. And so, you know, when we're taking windows out and putting plexiglass up while we're working on windows, I know exactly what you're talking about. Oversized windows. We've reglazed ourselves. We've sent them out to be reglazed. I can relate to what you're saying. I have a ton of windows too. Right. So and I also wow. know that people are there to rip you off by saying, this is better, do this, this is better, and that type of thing. And right. if you don't have the resources, like you're a saying, you know, I couldn't find X, Y, and Z, um, those that have, have done that kind of work in the past and have the resources, that's why I'm saying reach out to the Preservation Society okay. because, you know, they're there to help you as well. And um, I, I think you'd be surprised at the resources that we um you know that you'll come across that will help you out and save a ton of money because it it is um better to restore what you have and keep it even if it's been abused um it can be restored as like rick was saying there's like products out there that help you i mean I know that the Preservation Society just fixed some windows at the Dr. Fisk house that's been completely abused and they came out amazing. So that's great to know. Yeah. So reach out. You know. Unfortunately, as a city entity, um, we can't really, um, I guess, endorse certain companies over other companies. You know what I mean? It's, it's, hard to do that but preservation society is a it's a private nonprofit and, okay um, they they do so much amazing uh amazing things in the city and they are such a wealth of information so they are they are a good bet but i mean That's like i said i have a one window on that i don't want to be placed because i like it so i'll start with that one <laughs> the crisscross one the swiss It'd be a shame to lose that. Well, it's in that picture. You <laughs> see how it's original. I never replaced it because I don't want to replace it. That's Those become very pricey to replace anyway. Mm -hmm. And I do love the original window. And I so I definitely will reach out and, and get someone to maybe reglaze that one. That definitely adds the character to your home, which probably what attracted you to your home, you know, um, is its character. And that would... Um, losing something like that would be a shame. Right. Um, on, a, on a side note, um, so I I go walking through the neighborhood every so often, and if there's a home that catches my eye, I'll do a little research on it. And um, okay. one of the things that catches me is that um, sometimes the architects aren't listed. Um, and it's not because... Um, uh, how should I put it, um, that it was just, there was no architect. It's um, the fact that a lot of the records from uh, say city hall or the um, building departments were lost or just misplaced and so forth. But um, so in that particular sense, and uh, for your house, um, it's an interesting because that was done by a Providence architect and a lot of their similar designs uh, throughout the city um, all have very similar characteristics. And those are things you don't want to lose off the house. Um, I think that your house was, I think it was listed as 1907 and this particular right. firm was very prominent um, in the larger house designs in that neighborhood. Um, uh, there's a, a whole cluster of them right around uh, President Ave and Highland where, where that intersects. There's a whole cluster of those houses and they still retain a lot of those very similar details that your house has um, that might not be necessarily seen on a house that was done by a local architect or a contractor. Um, so it's, um, uh, I did give Kristen a list. Um, I made some updates at least that I found for the uh, significant structure list. And um, uh, it's helpful to see like um, uh, what other houses this particular firm did. It was um, the firm is called Angel and Swift. 
And um, so- We actually uh, have uh, blueprints. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, I actually have them framed. Yeah, we have quite oh, wow. a few, yeah, we have quite a few sets. We have, I, I would assume the original, which some things were changed mm -hmm. already prior to us buying the home, you know, mm -hmm. windows and, you know, the back of the house, they, they got rid of a little exit with a little mm -hmm. porch that was prior to us buying the home. So it is interesting that you, you mentioned that and I appreciate it, but we do have um, the blueprints. That's, that's, fa that's fascinating. I mean, it's very rare. <laughs> Just to no, still they're in great different. and they're in great shape. Mm -hmm. I guess because the house was vacant for 25 years and no, I mean, 20 years and no one threw them out, mm -hmm. out or played around with them. Um, yeah, they did a lot of the houses in that neighborhood, even um, I think it's at 458 Maple, which is right next door to you. Um, they did that house as well. I think it was all for the same family there. It was a, a compound for uh, family houses. Um, right. And the only house in that compound that um, it was on one lot of land that was subdivided. And the only house that was not part of the compound is 94 Highland, um, which is the little shingle cottage i think be, uh, behind you um and oh, yep. that was built for somebody completely different but all the other houses were done by the same architect from providence all about the same time um and they just kind of this cluster yeah i think it was one family and they they i think they were all brothers mm -hmm. and so they built i think it was three homes you're right i think about that it's my home the one on Maple and my next door neighbor, I believe it was that family unit there, which makes it interesting. <laughs> so, great. Okay, so does anyone- uh... Turn is the windows moving, f is, it, is that my takeaway from this conversation? What, what is it? I'm sorry. The, are the windows the biggest concern is, is that my takeaway from the meeting tonight? Um, it's, it's, it's the front part of the house. What can be seen from the street? Mm -hmm. Like the two windows you're talking about in the back of the house that you're doing. The small, that, yeah, the small. Yeah, that can't be seen from, so it's really street view that we're very um, concerned about and that, you know, has to meet the ordinance for the neighborhood for the 40C. And okay. so that's, that's where the concern is coming from. That's why we're concerned about, you know, the, the look of the property changing um, and losing its character. And right. So when was 40C um, actually in, when did that get established? Jeez, I final. I'm trying to remember. And uh, I'm thinking it was 15. Kristen, you're muted. You're muted. Oh. <laughs> I, I'm not muted. No. It um, might have been 2015. I, I, I don't quote me on that. I don't I don't remember. I mean, I can go back and check, but my memory is like as far as remembering exactly when it was. I'm pretty sure it was because I had found something. Um, recently when I was going through some old papers and it was the thing where we, um, the initial, the original, um, after the study committee, when it was, when it was first, when we were first put on and I'm pretty sure it was 2015. It is 2015. Right, so that means, so when we replaced the windows, the, the historical commit um, properties weren't even established. So I wouldn't have known. Yeah, about. no, the thing is, is like Rick was saying, for some reason, the windows look really new, like brand new, and they <laughs> really stand out, whether it's because of the new shingles, or I, I don't know what it is, but they really do stand Shingle. out. It's probably the trim. You have to understand that trim was red. So now it's going from that red to a cream. So all the windows now will supersede because they were red, the trim. And now they're all white. And so it looks so much cleaner. And I think when we change all the red out, they'll even stick out more. 
you know, because it's only you're only seeing, let's see, basically the double window from the street and the, the bigger window. So you're only seeing two windows. All the bottom ones are um, original from the street. The ones on the porch, all those windows are original. So it's the ones above the porch and the two on top. So it's basically, you're looking at four windows and I have the receipt, we put those in, in 2014. I'm not- I the receipt but, with you. Yeah. What we're saying is like basically going forward, I, I think what happened was you had, you had pulled, I think this is what the confusion is. You had pulled a permit to fix something on the porch and then it expanded, correct? Well, it was the porch boards because that was some, and the columns, oh. all those bases were rotted, exactly. So, and then it expanded. And I think that's where the concern came in. And whether or not you put in the windows and, you know, if you put them in in 2013, 2014, what we're saying is going forward, you know, like I know you're saying it's expensive to replace the windows. And I'm saying that there are other resources so that you can save the windows. I wish I had known that when we first moved in. I wish I had known someone that could have, you know, fixed them all because I looked because I really wanted to keep the windows. I really, really did. I mean, I love old windows because there's nothing like the profile of an old window. Um, you know, I might have had to get some storm windows to for because we get very windy on this side. Um, you know, the um, from the water, the wind is extremely windy on this side of the home. So we definitely would have had to do something just to, uh, than to replace the existing, I mean, restore the existing windows. I wish I had known that because I would have preferred to keep our old windows now that I know that I will try and do that with all the other windows that we're going to replace. I'll just reglaze them um, and replace some of the wood because some of a few others really need some replacement. Um, but I'm not one to say, oh, I'm going to do the columns and they're going to be plastic. We're base really just restoring everything to its original. It was just those windows and a few windows that we placed. But I get it. So now every, little, every time we want to do a project, we just have to come, I mean, fill out a permit and then they will notify the committee. Yeah, or you- Not can, inside. You no, no, out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, when you out fill here, out- Anything on the exterior, I will have to apply for the permit then they notify the committee and then the committee will either approve or not approve. And then that will, will also help, help you, oh, help, they, help guide you. Yeah, that they don't, the, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead no, I was gonna say, they don't always notify us. What they do uh, well, is once, sometimes they will you know, check and see if something is, is in the district, other times they don't. So when you apply for the building permit, because you already know you're in the district. Right. So at the same time that you apply for the building permit, then you can just send um, a thing to us, like just shoot an email over to me and just say, um, you know, I just applied for a building permit. This is what I want to do. And then, um, you know, if, like I said, if you go on the district commission Facebook uh, city page, all the, the, the list is there, like the, okay. you know, the process for everything, the paperwork is there. If it's just something simple, like I'm just replacing shingles or whatever, then obviously it's, it's not as technical, but like other things, if you decide you're going to do some kind of project, then there's going to be some type of drawing done, you know, showing that, that you, you're doing this type of restoration or whatever then it's then there's going to be more detail but yeah the process is you would go to the building department ideally we would be notified by them but it doesn't always happen so okay. it's better for you like when you apply for the building permit for whatever each project that you do you, you do need a separate building permit and then okay. and then you come before us and say okay this is what i'm doing now and you know if it's something that we can 
help with, then we will do that. Obviously, like Connie said, reach out to the Preservation Society. They are a wealth of information. Um, and then, you know, we're not, we're not here to control everything. We're here to work with the homeowners in the district to help them find the best ways to preserve their homes. Because I think that when people buy a house in a district like that, it's because they love historic homes. Right. And I don't think that anyone, their intention is really to, you know, make something look new or modern or anything like that, or at least we hope not. So our job is to assist homeowners in, in preserving the integrity of the district and doing that for everybody. Because say, you know, say somebody moves in next door to you and they decide, oh, well, we don't want to do that. So they just start doing their own thing and then they, they put in something garish. It's going to reflect on your right. house. It's going to bring your value down. So it's kind of it's like everybody is in this together. So everybody needs to kind of keep an eye out for each other. Everybody, it, like our job is we're here to help the homeowners in the district to make the best decisions for themselves and the district. Okay. So... No, that's good to know that I can reach out to the Preservation Society and, you know, at, pose some questions in regards to best practices, because I'm sure they've, <laughs> they've done it all. Um, so that's good to know. And that'll be very helpful moving forward. So does anybody have any issues with what she wants to do right now with the shingles and the trim? You're on mute, Connie. Sorry. I'm forgetting to unmute myself. <laughs> I, I mean, it sounds like what you're doing with the shingles and the window trim it, um, is, is actually on par. Okay. Thank you. Rick? No, no, I'm fine. Again, my, my whole issue is you drive by then, and it is a beautiful home, but you, you drive by and those windows just jump right out at you. It, it would be really nice if um, maybe they could be, uh, I don't know if the, the paint could be applied properly at this age of the windows, uh, but maybe to tone down the white. Maybe if you, if you added a little cream to it to tone the color down. Yeah, they haven't been painted. That's just prime. Right. So I'm yeah. I'm talking about the windows, if they could be just uh, uh, toned down a bit. But from, the windows yeah. aren't white. You're talking about the replacement windows on top? Y yes. Those are cream, actually. They're well, really not that white. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, it, 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 that's, I didn't get the super white because I don't like it, and they had to match the others, but they're not that white. Right. And all I'm saying is that they jump out at you. So if they could be toned down, that might be beneficial. But I, I, we can't do anything with it because they were put in in uh, uh, 2014 and you were you were uh, painted like the same color as the other windows. Right. Like, are you planning to paint all the windows the same color? Like, are so, they all going to be cream or. Right. So all the windows now are just primed. So eventually they will be all cream, the trim and, you know, the grills. I think that's probably why you've been noticing the windows because they were red and now they're white, but prime. Mm -hmm. But I think we're talking about the trim of the window, the actual window, like if it. If oh, it the, the inside, the, ship, the stash. Well, not so much, but just the window itself, the, the, the frame of the window. Yeah. The window like, frame. The replacing with all the new wood, you mean? Not the wood. You have the window, the glass is embedded into a frame. That frame is just jumps out at you, is what I'm oh, saying. That, that's just the color of what the window came in as, mm -hmm. which is a cream. You had options because those came in pre-painted mm -hmm. and that the cream color that we chose because that's the color that our trim will be. Like we had someone else on High Street, they actually painted their um, storm windows black. Oh. On one of the houses on High Street uh, this past year. Okay. 
and it looks amazing. Like, oh, okay, so when he paints the the trim, then he can just paint all the grills and frames. I mean, I think it would look amazing if he did. You know, that's just that's our opinion. Yeah, um, but I think, he, I think we actually match the trim when the trim to that color of the window, which is a yeah. green. But so once you want, once it's painted, it'll make a difference, I think. Mm. I mean, I can't do anything now because they're in there. And, you know, they were too expensive to remove. And now I still have all my old windows. Maybe one day I'll restore them and put them back. But I'm just not in that position to do that now. Okay. I didn't even, I didn't throw them in, out at all. So the, the right now the windows are not the issue. Where the, the issue is she's talking about the trim and the shingles. Yes. That's what she's looking to do. So this is what we need to decide on. I understand the thing with the windows, but it's it's in the past and going yes. forward, she understands. So we need to talk about the issue at hand, which is the shingles and the trim. Yes. And, sh and you actually had the trim. Um, uh, right. Replicated. We bought the knife. We went to the mill work. We bought a knife. They duplicated all the trim according to what was there. We brought all the pieces with us, mm -hmm. the top, sides, and bottom, and he duplicated all that trim. That's awesome. Yeah. So this is what I'm saying. So is everybody okay with what yeah. she is here for tonight, which is... Okay. And Richard, you're okay with that? I am. Yes. The shingles and the trim. Okay. Thank you, everyone. All right. Okay. Thank you. And like I said, feel free to reach out whenever you have questions. Reach out to the Preservation Society. You can send me an email or a call if you have questions, and we will help in whatever way we can. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate okay. everyone's time, and thank you uh, for thank the you. approval. And Maybe one day I'll restore the old windows and put them back. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Anna. Thank Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. okay. Bye. Good night. Good night. Okay. Um, can I get a motion to go back to... You're on mute. Motion to go back to... Uh, where, where were we? We would be at public input. At public input. Okay, so I have a motion. Do I have a second? A second. Okay, roll call. Connie Soule? Yes. Richard Mancini? Yes. Jason Bouchon Naraki? Yes. Kristen Cantara Oliveira says yes. So back to public input. Um, I have received no public input. Um, I don't think anybody on here. Do we have any public input? Okay. Um, Moving on, public hearings and determinations, we have none. Uh, old business merger of the Historic Commission, Historic District Commission, um, we did discuss that in the Historical Commission meeting. Jason, were you at the meeting at that point? Yes. When we talked about the merger? Okay, so we don't, do we need to go over this? No. Again, I mean, just for, if anybody is still listening at this point, um, right now, Corporation Council, Alan Rumsey, has um, put together a proposal for um, the new ordinance that to be sent to ordinance committee. So we are going to look that over. We are going to be discussing it at our next meeting in, um, in April. And that is where we stand on that. So we are moving along, uh, um, at least we are moving forward. Um, okay, 258, 260 Prospect Street. Um, Rick, did you did you touch base again with Glenn on this as far as if he has followed up? No, we were looking for the. Uh, no, I did not do that. Uh, okay. We were looking for that receipt for the letter that was sent. Okay. And um, I don't think we've seen that yet. Okay, Kerry is here. We can ask Kerry. Are you still here, Kerry? Carrie Ayash? I'm here. Sorry, okay. I hit the wrong button. Um, I just, the mail room has checked and they never had a receipt of it. So there's nothing, at this point we've checked everywhere. 
So we're never going to get receipt because I had them go back in the same time frame that the letter would have gone out. And they don't have any receipt of it. So who is it that actually would send it out? It's not you, it's the mail room? No, no, I would send it out, but they receive, they get receipt when it was signed by the individual as well. They can pull it up. Do they you get, have a copy of that, Carrie? No. That's what's making me crazy. I don't. So can we resend that? If I put a new date on the letter? Yeah, of course we can. Okay. And then is there a way just to make sure that... that like, yeah, I'm going to send everybody a copy of the certified mail number. Okay, perfect. All right. So, all right. So I'm going to send that to Kat, to you with the new date. Um, I think I have to change the heading too. I'm not sure, what, um, but okay. And, then, and the last time I talked to Glenn, he was buried with the high school and he was, he had a he lot of things. so going. buried with the high school. He's at the high school every single day, all day right now. We don't even see him. Yeah. Wow. So he, he was, he was really buried at that time. So, <clears throat> And, and and even more so, I guess, now when you when you just read yeah. the publications that are going on. Yeah. Yeah, you can say that again. So then what are our options if... Um, maybe we can just send out that letter again and uh, I will give one to Glenn and um, with a little luck, Durfee will be... Carrie, is, is there any way that you could put a letter together for Glenn to just sign? Then it would just require him to review it real quick and put a signature on it. Stating and, that what would the work that was done? Yes. Um, so I'll do it for Glenn. Oh, is that what you wanted Glenn to do? Yes. Oh, okay. That's, I wish, yeah, I could probably put something together for him. And then if he has, if he, he can just say, listen, fix that, fix that. And right. if that's the case, we can, all right. I didn't know that that's what you guys were waiting for him. I thought you wanted him more so to go down there. No, 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 no. It's, it's just to get a letter that, that, that does not, that does not fit the 40 C district. That is not a historical railing. And what I'll do is I will kind of get a, just, I'll get Glenn to throw out a couple of key phrases that are, um, pertinent to the letter yes you can even use the letter that we wrote as sort of a guideline sure. and just switch it up a little throw in some yep that makes sense. lingo okay. um, yeah all right sounds good okay Hopefully, I mean, I, I i'll be able to do that in the next couple of days because now um like cpc stuff has had me a little bit crazy because we've been meeting every single week basically and now we have oh no we do a meeting next week but it's it's yeah it's a little bit I'll, I'll still be able to get it because I have a couple of days off at the end of this week so that's fine okay um okay uh anything else for open discussion is there anything we well, I, I get it's not on the agenda, so I guess we can't mention the property on the corner of Rock and French. She has not. I, I thought she was supposed to come before us. And she was, Carrie, did she, did you get that? Uh, I don't want to toss out names, but did anyone get to you on that property with, um, with the proper paperwork? Which property? The one with the deck? The one with the porch. The side porch. Porch. Okay, that's what I meant. Yeah. She was going to fill. Yeah, I think I sent something to you guys. No. I no. didn't. I send you a copy of the building permit, or Frank was dealing with that. Yes, just, just, but, but that was a that was not a building permit for that particular porch, and the uh, the this young woman. Mm -hmm. you, you did send something through, but that was not pertinent to what we were discussing. Okay. She was also going to uh, fill out all the proper paperwork necessary. 
uh, we gave her a blow by blow description of how to get into the historic district. Correct. I remember that. And she has not submitted anything. Okay. What is the address again? Uh, I think Are we it, allowed to say that? <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't know. I would, I would not. That okay. Just, just, we'll hold off on that, but yes. All right. But I'll speak with the building inspector as well. Okay, good. And, right. and we need that proper paperwork so that we right. can review what's, right. what's occurring there right. and, and address that situation. It's been ongoing now for... It's a deck, not a porch. Am I correct? It's No, it's a porch. A porch. Okay, other way around. Okay. Yep. Just so... I know the area that it's in. All right. I'll yep. speak with him and... Um, I mean, I could shoot her another email... I know that I, I spoke to this and I, maybe I, I don't know if I emailed her or I spoke to this woman, but I do know that I spoke to them, letting them know that they have to. Kristen did as well. You have to let them know. Um, we, we explained. No, you did. No, okay. it wasn't me. Uh, no, it was Rick. It was Rick explained the, the process of going online and what have you. Yes. And yeah. She has not gone forth with it. OK. And Connie has also been involved with this. I spoke okay. with her as well. Okay. I think I, Jason and I are probably the only two that, that haven't been involved in this. <laughs> Stay out of it if you can. Yeah, I, I intend to. <laughs> yeah. So if we can get that taken care of, Carrie, uh, and just shoot, shoot us an email. Yep, yep. Uh, I'm going to take care of it first thing tomorrow. Thank you much. You're very welcome. Okay. Um, anything else? No. Nope. Uh, the next meeting date, I think, is a mistake. Just yeah. Like yep. Our next meeting is, is actually scheduled for Tuesday, April 20th, 2021 at 6.30 p.m., not the 16th. Um, that was a typo on my part. Um, and it will be at 6.30 or directly following the Historical Commission meeting if that runs later. Um, and with any luck, we won't be having two separate meetings for much longer. Good. So I nice. know, I know it's been a long time coming. So would anyone like to entertain a motion to adjourn at 8 30 p.m.? I make a motion. I have a motion. Yeah. Do I have a second? Okay, I, I'll give you a big second. Okay. Roll call, Connie Soul. Yes. Richard Mantini. Yes. Jason Bouchard Naraki. Yes. And Kristen Cantara Oliveira says, yes, it is unanimous. We are adjourned at 8.30 p.m. Thank you, everybody, for hanging in here with us. And sure. have a good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Thank have you. a good evening.